Uh, so yeah, I'm from Dublin in Ireland. So um, <laughs> I'm from the capital city of Ireland, but I do live in Auckland uh, at the moment. I've been here for four years. My background is in um, nursing. So I've been a nurse for 20 years. Um, residential aged care and gerontology for the last 16 of those years. Um, also at the moment I've, I left the kind of nursing environment last year to become a counsellor and therapist and that's what I've been doing at, at the moment. I'm working on that and I'm also managing this project. So Michael do you want to introduce yourself? Or um, will yes. I just talk about I the video? I think Chris did a nice job. So I'm um, uh, Michael Boyd. I work for University of Auckland and Waitamata Health and have done lots of projects with older people so I'm really pleased to be here actually so I'm gonna let you go ahead <laughs> okay it's like <laughs> relay okay so we're gonna show you this video um, and we will then have a chat about it afterwards because it's the best way to introduce this to you meet Chris he has just been admitted from hospital for long-term care the NASC assessment identified a caregiver named Pat, who has been living at the same address and cared for Chris since his stroke 10 years ago. Chris's health has been deteriorating over the last six months and he now requires full-time nursing care. Pat has clearly indicated the wish to stay informed and involved in Chris's care. But Chris's son, who lives in Australia, doesn't like Pat. He holds an enduring power of attorney for his father and has instructed the residential care manager that Pat is not to visit any more. He has also insisted that Pat not be involved in any decisions about Chris. Unfortunately, since Pat has stopped visiting, Chris has become very distressed. He calls out for Pat at night and doesn't want to eat or drink. He has lost a lot of weight, and no matter what anyone tries, he remains depressed and withdrawn. The staff are worried. The GP and RN had conducted an assessment, but found no clinical reason for Chris's decline. One day, Chris's nephew visits him. He is shocked and very upset by Chris's condition. He asks if Chris's partner is aware of how bad Chris has become. There has been absolutely no information about a partner. Chris's nephew explains that Pat is his partner and that they had been living together for 10 years up until Chris's transfer to the care home. Meet Chris and Pat. They got to know each other 20 years ago and have been in a committed relationship ever since. Okay, so the title of this presentation is Cultural Diversity in Aged Residential Care. So what cultural group are we talking about here? Anyone want to chance a, a guess? Maybe the last picture might have been a giveaway. <laughs> Lesbian, gay and bisexual people in aged care. Because old people do have a sexuality which is um, hard for people to grasp sometimes um, because People assume that when people get to a certain age that they don't have a sexuality anymore, but they do. And um, when somebody's of a, a sexual minority sexuality, it's even more invisible at that time. So were any of you surprised that that's what we were talking about? Mm. Nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> um, we wrote this uh, presentation with that in mind because we use names that were, you couldn't figure out that they were male, female. And, we also, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let Michael introduce you to the background of the, the project and where it's come from because it's a three-phase project and then we can, we can uh, get into talking about the resources that we have developed. Cool, great, thanks. Um, so where this all started was, it wasn't my idea by any means. Um, this kind of, I was approached by a organization called the Rural Foundation um, what's happening and what I find really interesting in, in residential aged care and is, is people get older in general 
is that the so-called baby boom generation is a different generation. It's a, they are going to do things differently. And the way I always think about it is that that generation changed completely how we have uh, babies and how maternity care was delivered and I think this generation will change completely how we do older, older adult care as well. So I think it'll be a very, it's a very interesting time. So the Rural Foundation is a foundation that um, supports uh, lesbian, gay and bisexual uh, and transgendered um, projects. They do Outline which is a support uh, a phone line. Um, and so they approached us and said, look, what we're finding is that a lot of older uh, uh, sexual mi mi minority people are actually quite worried about residential aged care. We've heard some stories. And what we'd like to do is to have some uh, actual pragmatic uh, data and materials to work with uh, the staff of residential aged care. So. Um, there are, there's been other research, uh, Australia actually has been quite a leader in um, this research. Uh, there was out of Western Australia, they had a, 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 a report that came out said we don't have any of those people around here. Um, which is one of the main things that you hear when you ask about it is uh, oh, we don't have anybody like that here. Um, so about 8 to 10 percent of, uh, it's re estimated, of people in general um, are a sexual minority. So where it all started, again, is a rural foundation. We started with phase one, and phase one was uh, very similar to the co-design idea, is that we needed some data. We didn't know, you know what we didn't know, and so we needed data, and so we went to uh, Gary Bellamy, who, who has unfortunately gone back to London. Um, we miss him, but he, what he did is he went out to residential aged care facilities and had uh, focus groups with staff members using vignettes. So he, d he had a gay and lesbian vignette and then he would uh, have a conversation about it. Um, so the results of those vignettes were then, we used that as the basis for our design. Uh, the vignettes stimulated discussion from the ARC staff, uh, re age residential care staff. And the themes that came out of that, uh, those focus groups were that when staff knew uh, a gay and lesbian person, they were much more open than those that didn't know a gay and lesbian person. Uh, so, uh, for instance, one of the quotes was, we don't have that situation here because they're both elderly. So there's, there's because you get older, therefore your relationships don't count anymore. Uh, the, it's a generational thing. Uh, what they were saying is, uh, one of the quotes was, a resident was overheard telling another resident, we have uh, got a poofta over here. And that was from the staff. Um, so what, one of the things that was really quite surprising about the data was that it wasn't, you know, the staff and not knowing and all that kind of stuff. It was actually what the staff were worried about was the residents who had a very different generation and a very different um, idea about sexual minorities uh, that they would actually cause some of the bullying to the other residents and, and therefore we, we, uh, we actually that was quite interesting. I was kind of surprised about that. So um, the membership of the steering group, we have a steer, what, what we were able to do then is um, there's some fantastic uh, academics and clinicians that work with older people and are interested in older people and we were able to get a, a really diverse uh, um, a steering group together. Um, and Claire is part of that. She was working in residential aged care at the time. And we also have another, uh, Jessica uh, Budendak, actually, who is also working with us, um, who is, uh, works with residential aged care. So they were able to keep us grounded and pragmatic, plus the research that we've done. Um, but the, so phase one was the data collection. Phase two, actually, was how do we present this in such a way that it is accessible to everybody um, in residential aged care? And so it was kind of a design stage. And so we, we, in that stage, we actually wanted somebody who knew design. And so we, the leader of that, uh, the project manager of that phase was uh, Lisa Williams, who has a, a PhD in design. And so she was able to help us design it in such a way that it was uh, quite accessible. So we have, a care gu uh, we have guidelines for care staff. Um, we also have a participant workbook uh, and uh, we have a facilitator's guide. Um, now the other part to that is kind of the next 
phase that, uh, of co-design, which is to trial it. And I'm going to have uh, Claire talk about that because she actually did trial it. So if you just come and tell them how that went for you. Um, so there was a whole group involved in, in developing this, uh, this guideline. And it was really important that it was applicable to people in aged care, to the people who were, were going to be confronted with what do I do when one resident is homophobic towards another resident. So that's really the reality that people face out there. So we looked at um, putting together some kind of, uh, the guideline was there from phase one. The next step was to, to do the guide. So what we did was we developed the workbook, the facilitator's guide. So the workbook is kind of a blank sheet and it's got questions in it for, for the caregivers to look at. I've scribbled all over mine, of course, it's not very neat looking. But uh, so we leave this blank and then we've got a facilitator guide which goes along with that, which has got all the answers to the questions. So we've got, it kind of coincides with the, the blank questions and the facilitator can then lead the staff through the, the workbooks and use that. Um, as I said, it was designed originally that we bring staff in and tell them there's a cultural diversity lecture about cultural diversity and aspect of cultural diversity and we designed it that they wouldn't know until they saw the last slide of Chris and Pat together that they were a gay couple. And the reason we focused on a gay male couple, first of all, was because that was probably the, that's probably most difficult for people to, it's probably the most, uh, I suppose, trying to put this in a, <laughs> the right way. They are the people who are most visible and most kind of, um, there's more homophobia out there. So we wanted to do that first. Our next phase is going to be looking at a lesbian scenario with the lesbian couple in aged care which is actually every time I look at the, the scenario kind of <laughs> makes me cry a little bit because I'm like, oh, this is terrible. We're really, you know, digging deep. Um, so we did go out to an aged care facility, the, the same place we took the photographs. Uh, it was a Bupa care facility, so they kind of gave us the space to do that. Um, and we talked to some caregivers and we, we did the education and we presented the, the workbooks and went through that training. And some of the responses were really interesting that we got back. So I can, I'll just go and show you the, this is the website where it's all um, pr uh, been published. So you can download the resources from this website and there's links to it at the end of the presentation. So you can click on the links when you get the presentation sent out to you. Um, but this is where we had the launch and we, uh, we launched the video there. Um, also, we've got a, a Facebook site. So similar to the last speaker, um, I'm kind of running the Facebook site at the moment. It's called Silver Rainbow NZ. And I've put up on that website all of the different resources that we've used and all of the different reports from Australia and around the world that we have um, accessed when we've been doing this project. So why are we concerned? Because the invisibility of Chris and Pat's relationship caused their rights to be violated. That's why we're concerned. We're also concerned that lesbian, gay and bisexual people in aged care, because they are feeling vulnerable at this stage of their lives, they go back into the closet. They may have lived their whole lives out and they go into residential aged care, they're feeling unwell, they are admitted and they have to change this huge change in their life and they may go back into the closet because they don't feel they are going to get the care they need and the understanding. And what it's about is it's not a, a KPI or anything, it's actually about people feeling like they won't be understood in residential aged care and, and in any environment really in healthcare. Because we're talking about a group of people here who, who grew through the periods where being gay was illegal, they could have been arrested for expressing their sexuality, they could have been put in jail, they were, there were many treatments for homosexuality which were imposed upon gay people and some people self-imposed it because they didn't want to be gay and they tried so hard not to be because it wasn't acceptable in society. And now we live in today's world in New Zealand, which is a, a very accepting society, I think. And there's still some, some areas that need to be improved upon. We've got the big stuff right. We've got, you know, um, marriage equality happened last year, which was a really good year for for the silver rainbow community and the rainbow community in general. So things are happening, but still this, 
there's this fear in people and I don't want anyone else because I've had a few people come up to me from the rainbow community and say I don't want to go into aged care I would rather commit suicide than go into aged care because nobody will understand me they won't know what my needs are they won't know how important my family is to me because when a gay person talks about family sometimes not every time we've got family but we say family meaning each other so are they family is she family is he family we mean are you also part of the rainbow community so family takes on a new meaning to us and it's about educating people about that so the rights that were violated the right to be treated with respect freedom from discrimination coercion harassment and exploitation the right to dignity and independence the right to effective communication the right to support they were all breached in this case that we just saw the video so we developed this and we had some learning objectives in mind. Participates, participants will demonstrate that they have an understanding of the rights of LGB residents to have their needs met in a respectful manner. Participants will be given information to allow them to develop an understanding of the unique needs and differences of LGB residents. Because we treat everybody the same is probably not going to fit there because we, are, we do have certain needs and we do have um, differences where we don't live in a traditional family way, that it's a little bit different sometimes. Some people do live in a very traditional family way, so it's about that range. Potential impact of not being recognised and respected as a specific cultural group. So the potential that in the vignette, in the video, we had Chris and Pat. We had Chris becoming really, really unwell, and nobody really knew why. It's because his partner of 10 years wasn't allowed in to visit him. So these are our phase three. We called it silver rainbow because we were going to call it grey rainbow, but that wasn't fabulous enough, you know? <laughs> so we thought we have to call it silver. It's more sparkly. It's a bit like this morning, Matthew said, we did the, the gay rainbow for the float, yes. and he said we had to add a little bit of sparkle. You've got to have some sparkle when you talk about gay people. So uh, we added that with the silver rainbow, and that's why we've called it that. Um, so these are kind of, when I, when I do the talk, I like to show people images of same-sex couples being affectionate towards each other and really looking at it as it's not actually that different to opposite-sex people showing affection to each other, is it? I'd like to just show you, um, or to share with you something, and that is the... I'd like you to do something, actually. What time? We've got time. I'd like you to get a sheet of paper out in front of you. You got a sheet of paper there. Big or small? Any size. Any size. It can be that size or it can be half that size. And I want you to draw a line across the page. <laughs> okay. So you draw a line across the page. It's got two ends to it. And one end is strongly agree and the other end is disagree. Whichever end you want to do it. So from strongly agree to disagree. I'm going to read you some statements. And I want you to mark on that line where you're at. Where you strongly, you strongly agree or you disagree. Okay? This is for yourself. Residents should all be treated equally, no matter what their culture. That's number one. Number two, I'm comfortable with residents being affectionate towards their same-sex partner in front of me. Number three is, I am comfortable in challenging homophobic comments made by others. I am comfortable caring for a resident who is LGB. Number five, I am comfortable asking residents open-ended questions about their sexuality and their sexual diversity. Maybe I'm going too fast. People are really considering this, it's good. Because we're examining our judgments and our, our ideas and we come with lots and lots of values and judgments. This is one of the exercises in the training to look at that 
And now imagine, those of you who are healthcare providers or even people who provide any kind of service, consumers here, imagine now that person, there's an, a lesbian or gay person, has walked into your, your clinic or your, your place of work, and imagine where you put yourself on this scale. Would it be different now, do you think? If they say to you, I am a lesbian and I need health care from you, I need your help with something. So, anyone surprised by their own reactions? Or anyone? So, what we would like to do is do this before we do the training and then do it afterwards, but then we'll have given away our video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so another one of the activities which I'd like to share with you is a quiz. So we've had some fun with a quiz. I haven't got any prizes, <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, the quiz, okay, so it's a true or false quiz. People choose to be LGB, true or false? Now, I will say that um, when we did the launch, yeah. It's not like the community agreed on this either. So no, we this is a controversial <laughs> one. We like yeah, to start off controversial. controversial. Not that it's not all controversial, but <coughs> this is one of the controversial ones. Is it a choice? So who says true? It is a choice. Don't be afraid. Uh, <laughs> who, who, who thinks it's not a choice? Who doesn't really know? Our answer is that it is not a choice to be LGB. But when we did launch this, we had some disagreement from within the community, and some people said, well, actually, I did. I chose it. And that's my decision. That was my, the way I decided on my sexuality. And when we talked and we did it with the caregivers, one of the caregivers said, yeah, they do choose it, yeah, of course. They, they don't have to be like that. They choose to be like that. And I said, OK. So she said, uh, I said, can you talk to me a little bit more about that? And she said, um, well, they do it to get famous sometimes, <laughs> to get attention, to get a good job. And I said, okay, can you, can you tell me somebody who has done this, who's come out of the closet and said they're lesbian, gay or bisexual, and it has really done their career a lot of good? Oh, that guy, Graham Norton. There's a Graham Norton here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, Graham Norton, who's on the TV. And yeah, he's done really well out of that. He's just being himself, you know? <laughs> And there is a difference between deciding to be gay, lesbian or bisexual and deciding to tell people that you are and living your life that way and being freed of the difficulty of it being a crime and it being a disease of some kind. This is not a disease and it's not a disorder. So that was controversial. Now the next question is a bit more... No, I'll, I'll go to the next one. Is that Gay people don't have any children, true or false? <laughs> Oh, we know that's, that's not true. We know gay people can have children. <coughs> that, uh, some people have children in uh, heterosexual relationships they've been in before they get into another relationship. Or um, lesbian gay, gay people have children in their relationships. They bring them into their relationships and create them in that relationship through different methods. Number three is, I can challenge a resident who uses homophobic remarks about another resident. True or false? And a lot of people said, no, I wouldn't challenge. I wouldn't challenge a resident because, you know, that's their belief and that's their values and that's their, I can't challenge that. But they're using homophobic remarks about one of your residents. If they were using racist remarks about one of your residents, would you challenge that? And yes, you would. And you have to. It's actually your responsibility to challenge that. It's not a choice to, to challenge that. Then we, we value and we respect people's opinions and their own values, because we all come into this room with values, as I said. We all come into this with our various cultural backgrounds and our religious backgrounds and beliefs, and we all respect that. We respect that you've got your beliefs and values. But if you're working in healthcare, you have a responsibility to provide the exact same service to anyone, no matter what you think of their chosen or not chosen lifestyle or sexuality. So there is, a, in, within the, the Nurses Council and within the Code of Conduct for Nurses, we cannot discriminate against anybody. So it's not okay to implement your values onto somebody. And I'll just tell you another little story. What time is it? Uh, I got that. Well, less than that. Okay. 
I'll tell you another story which I just heard recently, which is quite a sad story. It's um, a resident in an aged care facility, and his his partner, his long term partner, um, came to visit him one day. Um, very very dignified men, very very professional men. These these two men, who were in a committed relationship, and a caregiver arrived to uh, carry out some care, and uh, noticed that one of them was quite flamboyant. I'll use that word, quite flamboyant, very out there. And she started to tell him that they were from a similar cultural and religious background. So the caregiver started to shout at them how disgusting she thought they were, how disgraceful it was that they would live their lives in this way, and how they were not going to go to heaven, they were going to go to hell. She went on this tirade at them. And that is unacceptable. And what happened was it was reported to the manager. They had a process and they, they addressed it. And they addressed it with the caregiver as well. And she doesn't work as a caregiver anymore, which I think is a good idea <laughs> for the managers. So there's lots of stories like this. Um, I'll go back to the quiz because there's another couple of fun things. Um, true or false? Lesbians just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Mr. Wright. Yeah. And number seven is, well, obviously that's not true. <laughs> that's false. Bisexual people means somebody has had sex twice. <laughs> true or false? They may have had sex twice, but that's not what it means. <laughs> And by the time people get to us, their sexual orientation is irrelevant. That is false. I have worked in aged care long enough to see the hookups and the relationships that go on in aged care, and it's a really very fertile ground for <laughs> relationships and intimacy. And it happens. And it's, it's, you know, nurses get very stressed out about it because they don't know how to handle it, because, well, these are old people, though. We didn't think this would happen when we came to work here. <laughs> So how do we handle it? I don't know. Well, I, and somebody was saying to me, how do we handle it, though? And I was like, well, are they both, both able to consent? Yeah. I said, well, then knock on the door before you go in. You know? <laughs> Maybe knock twice. So <laughs> that's, that's what we're kind of trying to, um, to work through. So we're working, as I said, on a second lesbian video, which is going to be very sad. <laughs> and I hope you'll all um, log on the... Rainbow, uh, Silver Rainbow NZ Facebook site and have a look at um, what we've been doing. So I'm trying to update it as often as I can. Uh, we're having a conference on the 1st of July, which is a cultural diversity conference. And we are including a whole range of cultures within that uh, cultural diversity program. And the message is that this is one culture of many. It is one within uh, who have the same rights as anyone else. And uh, we've got a very a nice, interesting program. Um, the information for that is up on the Silver Rainbow NZ uh, Facebook site, but also um, you can, I'm just thinking how would you, if you wanted to attend this, it's on the Commission website too, thank you Chris, that's great. Um, and this is a Beatles concert in 1964. What's wrong with this picture? Or what's right with this picture, depending on your sexual orientation. So like. There is a, a spectrum, you know, where a sexuality spectrum. There are some heterosexuals in that picture, and there are some homosexuals. <laughs> Which ones do you reckon? <laughs> They're having fun, anyway. So these are the people that uh, we might be seeing in aged care sometime soon. And there's uh, the websites: uh, affinity service uh, events, community services, and um, counselling services are offered by Outline. So if you've got any people that you're looking after who are LGB, um. And the education resources are there, they're available to, f to download for free. And just a quote I'd like to end on by Rita Mae Brown, which is, my, lesbian is a <laughs> my lesbianism is an act of Christian charity. All those women out there praying for a man and I'm giving them my share. <laughs> so, thank you very much. <laughs>